No matter how many years I have grown orchids, there's always a first time for everything. Case in point, black rot. So let's talk about the what, when, where, and hows, and whys black rot appear. This video is the first of a two-parter when it comes to videos on black rot, because in this video I just want to address the theory behind the black rot. And in the second video, we are going to be unpotting my orchid and assess the sequence of events that led up to this by seeing how much damage has been done to the root system. Both videos will have each other's links in the description as and when they air, so check that out if you are interested, depending on which one you're going to see first. And speaking of sequence of events, as I go through the details of black rot, I'm going to be using images of my orchid from the years she was doing well to present day. This way you will see the history and get an understanding that black rot, while it does happen fast when it happens, the sequence of events leading up to a situation like this can take several years. So let's get to it. So good to have you here and thank you for being here, I appreciate you. Right out of the gate, let's get an understanding of what black rot actually is, apart from nasty and totally unwelcome. But what is black rot really? Black rot is a common fungal infection that can affect orchids and it's caused by a group of pathogens known as Phytophthora. These fungi thrive in warm and wet conditions, making orchids susceptible, especially if there's excessive moisture around the roots. So, I would like to qualify that by stating that, while this fungus thrives in warm and wet conditions, everyone growing in the tropics, as well as in climates with two very heavy rainy seasons, beware and be aware, that means you. Anyway, as the history of this orchid is being shown in images, you will see that my orchid contracted it during cold and wet conditions. In order to get ahead of any potential black rot infections, I will give you some details in a bit, but to diagnose why mine got it during the cold and wet conditions, that would be because there was an excess of moisture around the roots of my orchid. My setup pretty much determines this to be the case. In addition to that, my orchid was already taken out by the cold temperatures and low light levels of two previous winters. Orchids not having a quick metabolism grow slowly, so the following two summers did not allow for enough time to have her recover before the next winter came around. Before I delve into more information about black rot, let me get one question out of the way, one that you may already be thinking. Why did I not repot the orchid during the summer in which she was growing the previous growth? Well, a weak orchid, when disturbed, usually weakens even further. So I chose what I consider the safer way of not stressing this weak orchid out further by leaving her be. I still flushed and fertilized, although be it weaker than usual because I was babying the growth of 2023, but the orchid had enough room for another growth, which I was gambling on to get another root system from and then to keep growing, etc, etc. What I did not think would happen was that this orchid wanted to pull through and start a new growth just as we were heading into fall of 2023. That is the growth you see with a black rot. Low light levels, cold temperatures, wet roots, and this combination is a triple whammy that is just going to invite black rot, as well as what we talked about before with hot and wet conditions. So, having gotten the analysis of my orchid out of the way, let's break down black rot, if we can, with some more information that may help avoid any issues in the future of your orchids. Where does this come from? Well, black rot typically enters orchids through wounds or cuts on leaves or stems. It can also be introduced by contaminated tools, media, or water. Excessive moisture is a major culprit of black rot. Overwatering or poor drainage can create an environment where these fungi flourish. Additionally, injuries to the plant can provide entry points for the pathogens. The symptoms that you need to look out for are water-soaked lesions that turn dark brown or black, often spreading very quickly. Leaves will become discolored and the affected areas might have a distinct unpleasant odor. Not normally though, because it happens so, so quickly and by that time we are already hopefully snipping things away. We'll get to that. So how can we prevent all of this from happening in the first place? Well, to prevent black rot, ensure proper orchid care. Maintain a well-ventilated 
environment, avoid overwatering, and use sterilized tools every time you do any incisions with your orchids. If you are expecting extended hours of rain with high humidity to follow, lasting days on end, even if they are short bursts of torrential rain, move your orchids where they are not exposed to such a continuous amount of water. Make sure that if you're growing in this kind of environment that you always use a very free draining mix if your orchids are potted up so as to avoid any form of waterlogged pots. If your orchids are mounted in the landscape, keep an eye out for any signs of black rot occurring. You really may need to climb some trees or get a ladder because it is paramount for the health and well-being of the entire orchid to catch this stuff early. However, fear not, usually orchids that are in the landscape will be able to handle the conditions because they get the maximum amount of airflow to counteract the consistent moisture they are subjected to, again, which includes high humidity. Is black rot treatable? Well, yes, sorta, kinda. If caught early, you can remove affected parts, use sterilized tools, and treat with fungicides. However, prevention is key because advanced cases may be challenging to treat. It is possible your orchid is lost, even if you think you've got ahead of it, into it, and dealt with it on time. But that does not mean that orchids cannot survive black rot infection. They can recover if the infection is detected early and appropriate measures are taken by cutting out everything that looks nasty until you reach healthy tissues. However, as always the case, healthy orchids with good cultural practices are more likely to resist or recover from black rot. So now that we've gone through what the black rot is all about, here's what I suggest you do for your orchids if you feel as though your climate is going to be a potential influence for your orchid to contract black rot. If the following tips are practiced on a regular basis as part of the general care regime, then your orchids will be less likely to counteract black rot. But before we go there, could you please do me a favor and like the video? It's a simple way of helping the channel and the video. And if it's not asking too much, please also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so, so much for that as well. So in order to get ahead of our black rot, here are my suggestions. Choose a balanced orchid fertilizer with a formulation like 202020 or 201020. This ensures your orchids receive a well rounded mix of essential nutrients. Fertilize regularly during the growing season, but be cautious not to over fertilize as excessive nutrients can contribute to disease susceptibility. So, what does that mean? Disease susceptibility. Well, too much of a good thing without the support of another good thing can lead to large growth, but their cell structure will be weak and not able to ward off anything trying to take them out. It is fundamental that when you fertilize your orchids and your aim is to grow the biggest growth your orchid has grown to date, that you really supplement your orchid care routine with trace elements like magnesium, calcium, and other micronutrients. These elements play a vital role in plant health and can contribute to disease resistance. I would like to put the emphasis on calcium nitrate though, especially if your orchids are growing in your landscape. Controlled grow environments can relax a little when it comes to the focus on calcium nitrate quantities and frequency because, well, they are controlled. But orchids that are exposed to conditions of high humidity, plenty of regular or persistent rainfall, like the monsoon for example, they need to be given extra amounts of calcium to ensure that your endeavors of growing bigger structures are not going to compromise the health and strength of the cell walls. Also, consider introducing beneficial microorganisms to the orchid's root system. Mycorrhizal fungi, for example, can enhance nutrient uptake and help protect against certain pathogens. You can find mycorrhizal supplements specifically designed for orchids, one of which I'm currently testing is TNC Mycohydro. But any type of additive with mycorrhizal fungi will do. Don't forget though that incorporating organic supplements like seaweed extract or fish emulsion will also promote overall plant health and resilience. You see, prevention is better than cure, and especially when it comes to nutrients, fertilizing supplements, and other kind of components that will help 
build strong growth, all of that is boosting your orchid's immune system and all of that can be crucial to the health and well-being of your orchids when exposed to conditions that are a little bit too wet for a little bit too long. Because even though I say with a lot of airflow, know that in some environments the airflow is loaded with water as well, that being humidity. I like to add products also that contain silicon as it's believed to enhance a plant's resistance to stress and diseases. However, as you can see with my orchid, there is only so much any product will be able to do and without the right conditions, nothing is guaranteed, no matter our best intentions. If we find ourselves within certain limitations of what we can realistically do to protect our orchids, then the best way of forgiving ourselves that we made a wrong judgment call is to learn from it, understand why it happened despite our best intentions, and hopefully, in future, avoid it from happening again. So I sincerely hope that this video was helpful and check the description for the link of part two where I take the orchid out of the pot and see what is going on in there. It's not going to be pretty, that is my guess, but we are soon to find out if I am wrong or if there is even anything left that we can attempt to save what is remaining of my Sunya Green Mailman. If you have any questions, bring them on in the comments. In the meantime, I want to say thank you so, so much for watching the video. I want to also wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.